Tell me what fear is. Well, that's what I'm trying to, to be honest. I, I, I truly have no clue. You have a sense of what it would feel like to, to be afraid and feel fear? No, not really. What are you most scared of? Perhaps it's public speaking like the majority of Americans, or perhaps it's something completely different and unique to you. Now, imagine suddenly you're not scared of this anymore. Whilst this may seem like an ideal life, if your fear is something dangerous, this can easily put your life in jeopardy and simply kill you. But in what may seem like a little thought experiment has in fact happened to a human before. For one moment, they were living a relatively normal life. They were simply a child enjoying their youth. And the next minute, a crucial component of their brain ends up destroyed, forever to change their cognition, rendering them hopeless in the face of danger, unable to sense fear, or even be scared of the most terrifying things. Nevertheless, with this case, we've been able to uncover some truly amazing things about the human brain, including how it responds to fear, all due to one little organ. So, allow me to share her story and what we've learned. This is patient SM, and she's unable to feel fear, even when her life is at stake. I, I wonder what it's like, you know, to, to actually be afraid of something. Patient SM was born in 1958, and she's still alive to this very day. Due to ethical constraints, very little information about her personal life is available to the public, and with very good reason. Psychologists believe that should it be available, her life would easily be in jeopardy, and we'll come to this later. It's important we respect this and don't breach her privacy, so the only information generally available to the public about SM's case is that she's white, and she's been married before, unaware if she remains married to this day, and she's also the mother of three children, each of which are boys. In terms of her childhood, again, the literature is sparse, however it is noted that around the age of 10 years old, SM underwent significant bullying at school, for she was constantly picked on, made fun of, and even alienated, as well as being teased. This got worse, as even authority figures shunned her and gave her prominent abuse. Now, this type of behaviour is never justifiable, but as SM aged, it appeared that the reason people had chosen her as a target had become more obvious. Her skin had noticeable scarring, and even though she was young, she had begun getting wrinkles. It would also be incredibly dry and highly susceptible to damage. Not only that, but her papules around the eyelids had already started beading. But this eventually just stopped bothering her. Her brain didn't pose the bullies as a threat. This was her life until her mid-thirties, when suddenly she had a blackout and reported to the doctors. Her leading doctor, Dr. Trannell, noticed something peculiar though that were to change poor SM's life forever. The doctors had diagnosed SM with Herbic Wheatley disease, an insanely rare genetic disorder that has only affected around 400 people since it was first discovered all the way back in 1929, nearly 100 years ago. In fact, before humans, it was only ever seen in monkeys, but somehow it naturally ended up in humans. But what actually causes it? Well, the disease itself is caused by mutations on the ECM1 gene, of which leads to a deficiency of extracellular matrix protein 1. This is a complex network of proteins and other molecules that form the structural framework for tissues and organs in the body, playing a crucial role in cell signaling, migration and tissue development. Those with this mutation get an accumulation of what is known as hyaline material, a translucent, glassy, homogenous substance that moulds into certain tissues, mainly the skin and mucous membranes. This explained why SM's skin was in fact deteriorating, and is what led to her bullying. But there was another awful cause due to the development of Herbic Weather disease. This hyaline material, as said, can fester in certain places. In rare cases, it can do so within someone's brain, specifically the amygdala. Now, each person has two of these in their temporal lobes. They're one of the first organs that ancient human beings actually developed because they were so essential for their survival, and what they do is still necessary today. 
You see, the amygdala is part of the limbic system, and when you see something dangerous or our ancient ancestors felt a threat was near, the amygdala would process it and tell the brain to get out of this situation, or fight it. When someone has Herbert Weather disease, it seems as though this highland material decides to concentrate around the amygdala, causing significant damage to it. And with this damage, patients with lesions have shown great difficulty processing emotions, their fear response and even altered memory processing due to the amygdala's role in its modulation. However, most of the time, a patient with a lesion here still has one remaining amygdala to do most of the work, albeit less efficiently. SM's case was much more tragic. Brain scans revealed that both of her amygdalae had undergone complete calcification due to the hyaline material. They were effectively destroyed and at such a young age. This effectively became the first case in which scientists had seen the disease fall to such a standard. SM could no longer feel fear, just as scientists would have predicted. But unfortunately for SM, things were not about to get better. Due to the nature of the case, in it being so incredibly rare and unique, scientists were quick to jump on it, leading her to live a life constantly pestered by researchers, doctors and psychologists. Despite this, her case has taught us so much about human memory. So this is what they found. Tell me this, when do you remember feeling fear in, in your life? I believe when I was just a little girl. Due to being science's as new porn, SM was indeed rigorously tested. It was first notified that even with what was technically classed as serious brain damage, SM showed no intellectual differences compared to stunned humans. In what were called non-emotional domains, she performed just as good as what would have been expected from a healthy control. This intrigued scientists as it showed that as it was her amygdala that were damaged, the brain is highly localised structure. But what about her deficits? Well, the first notable one was a lack of fear. In what would have been quite cruel should you have a working amygdala, Essen was shown many fear-inducing stimuli, ranging from trivial fears like spiders and snakes. She had to be restrained from playing with the ones that would actually be quite dangerous to her. To even exploring haunted houses with the scientists. Most people, and even the researchers, were somewhat scared. But Essen showed none of this. She remained happy, oftentimes confused on the emotion that she should have been showing. It was clear that the disease also gave her a lack of processing fear in other individuals. When she saw other people afflicted by snakes or spiders, she couldn't understand their emotion towards the aggressive stimulus. She also interestingly could not process sad or scary music, but when presented with an objectively fearful stimulus, she had significantly greater difficulty consolidating and retrieving it compared to plain, neutral stimuli. What scientists did then was take it even further. They attempted to classically condition SM to physically feel fear. An example of this would be giving you a jump scare every time you sat down. You'd eventually become scared to sit down, even if the jump scare isn't present. With SM, she had great difficulty forming these conditional responses. Her brain had practically become impossible to scare. Scientists therefore could pinpoint the precise role of the amygdala due to her case, and have it explain why it is indeed the oldest brain organ. And this isn't even the worst thing they did. Before long, SM was subjected to a simulation of the subjective experience of suffocating using carbon dioxide inhalation. She was strangely found to experience fear and panic attacks of greater intensity than neurological healthy controls, but she described these panic attacks as completely novel. She never felt anything like it, and couldn't therefore manage her fear response. It was as if her amygdala couldn't process fear, she was simply scared, without knowing why. But there were other notable peculiarities in SM that showed us a rather different side to the amygdala. It eventually seemed as though SM didn't just have difficulty processing fear, but almost negative emotion entirely. She was pretty much the happiest person in the world, for she was even described as very outgoing, extremely friendly and uninhibited, as well as somewhat coquettish, and having an abnormally high desire and tendency to approach others. She could not identify someone as untrustworthy, and she could never see others' discomfort. The only negative emotion she actually could identify was pain, which had become incredibly empathetic, and this is what proved a great danger. For SM had become too friendly. She struggled understanding personal space, showing literally no discomfort when standing extremely close to strangers, even when directly nose to nose with a random person, eventually learning that others may need more personal space than her and this overt friendliness has nearly cost her her life. She's been the victim of muggings at both knife point and gunpoint, almost killed in domestic violence attacks and received death threats on several occasions. But even with the life-threatening nature of these situations, 
SM has never showed a single sign of desperation, urgency, or other behavioral responses that would normally accompany such incidents. She's never been convicted of a crime herself, and she remains unfazed by these attacks in the past. So, there's the case of SM, and it really is fascinating. One woman has aided us in seeing just how amazing one little organ of our brain has been in human survival and prosperity. We owe SM a great deal for furthering both psychology and even medicine. All we can do is hope she lives the rest of her life as happy and comfortable as possible, safe from anyone trying to take advantage of a great woman. Years ago, when, when my three sons were, were small... It's okay, don't say their names. Okay, I was walking to the store, and I saw this man on the park bench. He said, come here, please. So I went over to him. I said, what do you need? He grabbed me by the shirt, and he held a knife to my throat and told me he was going to cut me. I told him, I said, go ahead and cut me. I said, I'll be coming back and I'll hunt your ass. Oops, am I supposed to say that? Yeah, I'm that's sorry. That's okay, it's, a, it's an intense situation. How did you feel when that happened? I wasn't afraid, and for some reason he let me go. And I went home. Call the police? No. Thank you so much for watching, I appreciate every single one of you. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, it's free and it really helps me out. See you next time.